Situated in one of the most important geopolitical locations in the world right now lies Greenland, an empty, barren land with a population of just 56,000 people. It may seem insignificant with its harsh living conditions and a GDP of just 3% of Puerto Rico's, but it's not. See, Greenland is the world's largest island, with a landmass equal to the size of Germany, Poland, France, Italy, Spain and the Netherlands combined. Its vast deserts of ice offer many military benefits above and a ton of resources below. This means, of course, that America has a vested interest in owning the island, and it even goes back centuries. After the purchase of Alaska from the Russian Empire in 1867 for $7.2 million, US Secretary of State William H. Seward considered the idea of annexing Greenland and Iceland that same year, even going as far as commissioning a report on it, though nothing came of it. More recently, $100 million was offered to Denmark for Greenland in 1946 as President Truman also recognized the island's value, but again, to no luck. It was in 2019 though, whether due to a distraction from domestic troubles or a genuine attempt, that former American President Donald Trump caught the world's attention when he said he wanted America to buy Greenland from the Kingdom of Denmark. But the thing is, a lot of this interest was because government buying and selling territory has slowly died out since it was common practice around the 19th century, when Washington bought what is now America's coldest and most northern state, as well as land from France, Spain and Mexico. As recognition of people's rights to sovereignty has grown, the ability to just buy land, presumably with people living on it, has become basically impossible today. I mean, yeah, Greenland is extremely sparse, but there's still 56,000 people living on the island with vast cultural differences. They can't just be bought by America. Besides, it wouldn't be a good match anyways. Currently, 60% of the land within the US is privately owned, while all of Greenland is owned by the government. They currently get free healthcare, public education, and pensions for all of its citizens, paid for by Denmark subsidies. They've got the European mindset, not the American, and I don't think they'd want to give all this up to essentially be treated like another Puerto Rico. Regardless, the problem isn't whether Greenland could hypothetically be bought, but that ownership is the wrong concept to start with. See, Greenland is a part of the Kingdom of Denmark, about as much as Scotland is a part of the UK. They're a mostly autonomous, self-governing entity, with the exception to their foreign affairs, monetary policy, and the defense of the country. So while they are technically owned by Denmark, it's not that simple. And besides, it might not be for much longer. The Prime Minister, Parliament, and all political parties favor breaking free of Denmark sooner or later. It's not a matter of if, but rather when. The outlook of Denmark's government is the same. This long-awaited split isn't due to a desire to live under another jurisdiction, but a Greenlandic vision of benefiting from increased sovereignty and thriving on the huge potential the island has. The obstacle right now is that Greenland needs to be able to survive without relying on Denmark, which it just can't seem to be able to do, at least right now. Simply put, Greenland is a financial burden on Denmark. They've never been able to make Greenland work economically. Greenland relies on $620 million of Danish subsidies each year, which make up about 60% of its annual budget and 20% of their GDP. Yes, there are vast resources under the ice, but accessing it will require huge amounts of investment. So where does the US come into all of this? Well, they'll clearly never be able to buy Greenland off Denmark as they don't claim ownership of them, and they'll never be able to buy an independent Greenland due to the large cultural difference, not to mention the estimated $1.1 trillion price tag. But the good news is that it doesn't matter too much, kinda. America can still reap the major benefits of its current relationship with Greenland, even after they become independent by supporting them. For example, Washington already takes charge of Greenland's foreign policy, simultaneously benefiting from its important strategic position in the North Atlantic and providing defensive capabilities that would be a lot more expensive for Denmark to take on directly. There's been a US military base in Greenland since 1941, Fuel Air Base, and there's never been a significant pushback against the continued presence of the world's most expensively assembled military. The military base sits 750 miles north of the Arctic Circle and includes a radar station that plays a crucial role in a US ballistic missile early warning system as the shortest route from Europe to North America goes via the Arctic Island. It also happens to be the halfway point between Washington and Moscow. It's an agreement that works for all sides, extending the US's military capabilities and bringing protection to a territory that would otherwise be obscenely inefficient for the Danish government, based almost 3,000 kilometers away, to effectively protect. An independent Greenland would have no hope of fully defending itself either, and protection is much needed. 
As of today, the Arctic is becoming possibly the most important geopolitical arena in the world. It's estimated that 22% of Earth's undiscovered and accessible gas reserves are located there. While the region has always been rich in natural resources, it's also always been incredibly difficult and expensive to access due to the region's severely cold temperature and weather, until now. As the Arctic ice sheets begin to retreat and melt due to climate change, more opportunity has started to open up, and Greenland is seen as the crown jewel of this region. The island is home to the only permanent ice sheet outside of Antarctica, covering four-fifths of its 2.16 million square kilometers. There's huge deposits of rare earth minerals, which are among the world's largest untapped reserves and essential for smartphones, electric cars, and countless other things. For now, China currently has a monopoly on super rare elements and Greenland is the only way to get even for the West. There's also the matter of new Arctic sea routes forming due to climate change, such as the famous Northwest Passage, which would significantly cut sea route times between Europe and East Asia. It's bounded by Alaska to the West and Greenland to the East. So if, say, the US was going to gain control of Greenland, it would mean they control the key parts of both the North Atlantic and North Pacific, making them capable of potentially establishing naval control over a shipping lane that could, within a century, potentially surpass the Suez Canal in geopolitical importance. This is extremely important because many of the new Arctic sea passages already belong to Russia, like the Northern Sea Route. Lastly, you can't forget that Greenland would give you insane Arctic drilling rights, fishing power, and the largest proven reserves of fresh water within its large exclusive economic zone. I mean, you really cannot underestimate the island's importance. Whoever controls Greenland in the next few decades will be in the best strategic position possible for the future Arctic resource race. Some have even called it the most strategic piece of land to control in the world in the future. So naturally, the US defense of the island is key. China and Russia, the West's two biggest enemies, are already trying to compete for control over the Arctic and more or less Greenland, for basically the same reasons as the US. Beijing has already started to call themselves a near-Arctic state to try claim a stake in the region and pledge to build a polar silk road under its Belt and Road Initiative. In a similar sense to what they're doing in Africa with funding public infrastructure, we know this because it's already been attempted. In 2017, China had wanted to buy an old naval base abandoned by the Danish defense. And later, the state-owned China Communications Construction Company tried bidding to build two airports one in Nuuk and one in Ilulisat, which Greenlandic politicians had initially shown interest in seeking Chinese funds, though these projects were shut down by Washington. While Russia, on the other hand, having basically destroyed any chance of gaining military rights on Greenland peacefully after the invasion of Ukraine, still has the largest permanent military presence in the Arctic. The Kremlin has also recently been resurrecting previously closed Cold War military facilities in the Arctic and deploying forces to them, along with the world's largest fleet of icebreakers. As the European Commission is expected to set up an office in Greenland in 2023, with NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg calling presence in the region a necessity to counter Chinese and Russian interests, and the US having reopened a consulate in Nuuk in 2020, the first time since it closed in 1953. It seems like Greenland is in safe hands for the time being, even if America will never own it. Thank you for watching.